Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia. Let's talk books. Today I'm here to do a review of Simone de Beauvoir's The Woman Destroyed. So this is a collection of three short stories she wrote. I'm not sure when she wrote them actually, now that I think about it. Either way, I got really lucky to find the copy, a copy of this book at my former used bookstore. I've moved so I'm like, this bookstore is really great, but now it's too far for me to go to. But um, either way, I finally got to it and it is just an amazing collection of short stories. I really, I'm not sure if enjoyed is the correct word, but I really loved each of these stories and the themes that they explore. So I, what I thought I would do is just go through just some of the main themes that are touched on in each of these stories. And I'm not gonna go through every element and I'm not gonna do summaries of them. So if anybody's coming here to try to work on a school project, I'm sorry, I think this will provide very limited help. But if you end up using any of my ideas, don't forget to cite me. <laughs> okay, so it's three short stories featuring women like later in life, right? Like they're no longer young and they're starting to not feel young anymore. Um, in the first story, we're encountering a woman who is facing a moment of crisis. Actually, that is a key theme in each of these stories, a moment of crisis, and what that moment of crisis does for each of these women, uh, which is really leads to um, a lot of reflection, especially about the choices that they've made in life and reflecting on whether they were good choices, bad choices, what and where that ha those choices have brought them um, later in their life. The first woman's really struggling with her son's decisions, uh, but also going back and examining and seeing her son more clearly. Her vision of her son and what he should be doing conflicts obviously with her son's vision of what he needs to be doing, but also with her son's wife. Very typical story, I feel like, but uh, she's also confronting her husband's idea of what her her son, who, her, who who their son is, and, and the life choices, uh, and clearly they, they have very different visions of, of the child that they have together. At the same time that they've both grown old, and he's kind of looked at it in a very negative view. He feels an old age as like, okay, I've already accomplished all the things I'm going to accomplish, all the major things that I'm going to contribute to this world, to my profession. And she's not feeling that way. She's a much more positive person. And so her, her husband's negativity really weighs on her. But then as she faces this moment of crisis, she's thinking, wait, maybe maybe he's right about some of these things and maybe not. And and what what, what does that leave us in terms of our relationship? Um, the second short story is one that really like, oof, it felt like a splash of cold water because the other two stories have very likable characters. I felt, I like them very much. But the second short story, I really disliked the main character and yet, it was such a fascinating story. It's somebody who is bitter. It's bitter about her life choices. There's no questioning. She's facing a moment of crisis, but she wants to blame everyone but herself for the choices and the steps that have taken her to where she is. She blames her children for doing certain things. She blames her husband. She blames her mother. She blames anybody she can find to blame, she will blame. And so it was really jarring to be in that mental state um, because we're that's just we're seeing every all her thoughts as they run through her and it's just oof, it's a lot um that's fortunately the shortest of the stories and then the third short story faces a woman who finds out her husband cheats on her and then how she wants to react and how she actually reacts to that and that that's the longest short story and it's ooh ooh i loved it because it shows you how complex things are when you're living through something. From the outside, some of those situations can seem very black and white, but until you've lived through a moment of that kind of crisis, you don't really know how you're gonna react and you, and things don't seem so clear when you're in that place. And that's what she, what we see her struggling with, what we, what we see her facing. Um, and it, it was really emotional and powerful. Each of these stories was emotional and powerful. Um, so so 
one of the main themes that pops up in all of these is, is children and how the choice to have children and how to raise the children, what values to instill them, what that means once you're like you're done your most of your parenting is done the children have been raised and they're off doing their own thing and now they have feelings about you about the parents about all of that and um i found that super fascinating because from reading the second sex uh, I, I know that Simone de Beauvoir has very strong feelings about motherhood in particular and how motherhood negatively impacts women and so it was interesting to see her kind of explore a lot of that in through the lives of these three women. Um, it was just really interesting. It's something that I, I think a lot about even though I have no children but because I'm in that decade where a lot of people have children so I you know I'm I'm trying to make decisions and and so it was actually really perfect to to see the exploration of these three cases of women reflecting on things later in life um, I just I really enjoyed it I think this is really fascinating if you haven't read any of Simone de Beauvoir's uh, fiction um, this is, seems like a really good place to start at least for me I've read um, The Second Sex but I I don't believe I've read any of her fiction so um, this this was a, an amazing read for me if you have read this if you read any of um, uh, Simone de Beauvoir's other works, please let me know down below. I have a few more of her books that I found at my used bookstore that I will keep reading as part of this series of reading the French classics. Um, I think she is an, an ama she was an amazing thinker and a lot of what she wrote even in like the 40s or earlier really resonates today and that's why I still like to use her in my um, in my classes and why I am really enjoying reading reading a lot of her well now starting to read her fiction um, so if you have any suggestions of what to read next I will take any and all suggestions but thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one bye